Well, our cliche phrase is we use million dollar satellites to find Tupperware in the woods. But um, what it is is you go onto a site, you download coordinates, and you go into the, into the world and into mainly public places like public parks or public forests. You find these little containers um, or interesting locations and it's a way to you know, learn about the area. You go back to a website, geocaching.com seems to be the most popular place to go and you uh, record your uh, adventure, uh, uh, let people know what you found and uh, kind of share your experiences. I found it on TV about five years ago. I heard, it, heard about it so I looked it up on the computer and found out there was one just down the road. I also uh, like to find the different sort of containers that are out there for, for people to find. Um, there are various sizes. Um, it'll vary anywhere from something really small, what they call a, a nano cache. These aren't my favorite to find, but they, uh, they have their place. So it'll vary anywhere from something like that to something uh, uh, small cache, you know, like a matchstick container. Um, which is kind of interesting. Um, just something more, something I prefer, something like a peanut butter jar that uh, is easier for me to find and uh, you know, it gives you some room to trade um, items or um, trackables and that kind of thing that uh, you, know, you might want to do. This is a German butter dish. It had a liner in it and was used during World War II for the Germans got their rations in it. Um, you just put a magnet in it and it makes a good geocache. You're probably not going to find a hundred dollar bill in a, in a geocache, but you know, little trinkets, um, you know, back when my kids were smaller, we used to, uh, used to bring a small bag full of things and they'd trade, you know, you know, a lot of people like to trade McDonald's toys or different trinkets of some kind. So you'd find something, um, maybe something like, uh, you know, something like this and you'd trade for something of equal or greater value. Um, this happens to be a geocache, by the way, that I, I put together. It's got a little, little bison tube in there and it's got the little logs inside of it. Um, so you'll always find one of these logs inside of a cache too, um, that you'll sign your name, your geocaching name and the date that you found it. We have trackable uh, travel bugs and there's coins. They have numbers on them and you release one and you, you pick it up at one geocache and then you move it to another. They just come back from eight states geocaching, so I took a whole bunch down and I brought a whole bunch back. Another trackable is called a travel bug. Um, there's a little tag, a metal tag like this, that's got a small number on it. It will be as similar as a geocoin. You track it, log it into, your, into the geocaching site. And these travel bugs can be anything. You know, this happens to be a fishing lure with some path tags on it. It can be, you know, I've seen anywhere from, you know, a tiny little, you know, ring to, uh, a rim from a car as part of a, a trackable item so they can vary you know widely so but it's just a fun part of the game that some people really enjoy you go online at geocaching.com and you can put in a an area you can put in a, a zip code of a town and that'll show you everything going out from that town so you find a catch you want to go and download the coordinates onto a GPS or a smartphone and it'll also tell you the level of difficulty then the terrain rating so you know if it's on a steep hill or if it's wheelchair accessible and usually there's a hint and something wrote about it and a lot of times the name is a good hint and then you go out and you can find it and then after you find it you sign the logbook in it and then you go back online at geocaching.com and log on online and usually write a short description of how you found it or what you were doing, what you seen while you were finding it. And then you get a little smiley face for everyone you find. Come across a lot of interesting things that on my adventures. When I first went out, <clears throat> I remember seeing a um, an owl, plastic owl that somebody had hung in a tree about 30 feet up on a pulley system that you had to find. And, and 
I haven't only done it for a few weeks. It, it was it, it was one of those things that really, you know, was a unique hide um, that kind of gave gave me some ideas on how to maybe hide some unique containers myself. I found a lot of them in a lot of strange places, way out in the middle of the woods, some right in town, hanging where you can, anybody can see them, and some a mile back in the woods. A couple that I've made, um, you know, this is a, a geocache that I've made that's, you know, it's a little bit unique and unusual. Um, you know, the logbook would be in here. It's just uh, an old pair of binoculars that doesn't work anymore. Um, things like that. Or something that's maybe more of something more natural, something like uh, bark um, from a, this is from an old cottonwood tree. Um, so from the outside, it looks just like a piece of bark, but on the back, this is where the geocache would be where you'd sign the log. I have a lot of stories. <laughs> Been stopped by four cops in three different states. We just dipped down into Mississippi and we were finding a geocache very, very late at night at a Dollar General store. We pulled in to the back of the parking lot, which, was, which would obviously look sketchy to anyone who's not really a geocacher, but we pulled in there to look for it and my dad saw a cop come around the corner. He pulled in and he asked what we were doing. And we told him we were geocaching and really were hoping that we would not go to jail. And he, was, and he was like, oh, well, I do that with my Boy Scout troop all the time. So we breathed a big sigh of relief after that. And he let us go get it, and we continued on our merry way. Well, then there's events every so often where you get together with other geocachers, because a lot of it's online, and you don't really meet them. So then you go to events, and have get-togethers and then you get to meet all the other people that you just read about. It's fun, it's a great way to get out, get outdoors and you find places in your community and around the world that you never would have found normally, stuff that's off the beaten path that's really cool. It's a lot of fun, you can do it, there's young and old alike that do it, um, young kids, a lot of retired people. It's just a good way to get outdoors and it keeps some of the younger people interested because there's the technology part of it. I've found that um, you almost always, especially when you go to new towns or cities or um, you know, on vacation, a, a geocache will probably take you to some place that's of interest um, that you probably would not have found um, on your own. It's uh, either a unique container um, you need a view of, a, of some small waterfalls or a valley or something like that. Um, I mean, the geocaches in, in caves um, and uh, on top of peaks with uh, great vistas and views of rivers and things like that that are just very, very cool. Um, I, I think that's, for me, probably the, uh, the biggest enjoyment of caching is just getting, you know, getting some exercise and seeing some really cool stuff.